Okay, so how's it going guys? This is Rio Murata, photographer based in Tokyo. If there was like one video I really wanted to make, it would probably be talking about medium format specifically. And there are a lot of wide array of people who watch my videos, professionals to people who are starting out in medium format photography as of 2021. And in this video, I want to specifically talk about the 645 in general. Obviously, there are so many cameras, especially in the medium format. There's 645, 66, 67, and 68. Let's ignore that one in 69. And for this video, I just wanted to talk about the 645 system. What are the available options of 2021 and the reasons and blah, 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 the specs and stuff like that. Obviously, I won't be able to cover everything because there's like so many 645 cameras, but I just want to note down the ones that are available as of 2021 to help a lot of people figure out which camera will suit their needs. For like a recap for people who are new to medium format cameras, unlike 35mm where it uses a single format 35mm film, Medium format, you basically use the exact same film, but there are a variety of medium format formats available. That's what I just mentioned, 645, 66, 67, and 6 by 9 which is basically the aspect ratio of the how much film it uses on each shot. And as of this right here is how much shots you can shoot on each like format. 645, you can shoot 15 shots. 66, you can shoot 12 shots. 67, you can shoot 10 shots. While the 6x9, you can only shoot 8 shots. There are like pros and cons of each format, but instead of like diving into that, I would like to specifically talk about the 645 system in general. So, what are the available options as of 2021? Obviously, I'm not being sponsored by Mamiya at all because they don't exist as of 2021, unfortunately. But I have to admit that the first and foremost camera that pops out is probably the 645 from Mamiya, especially the 1000S series. And along with that, there is a super version that a famous photographer talked about, especially the 1000S series that I use as my backup camera to my GW690. And it's actually my first like 645 camera that I've actually purchased with my hard earned cash. So going deep into the Mamiya 645 1000S series, they do offer a super variant, which came out later, but let's go with the 1000S. It's probably one of the most widely available cameras in the market. You can probably snag one for roughly 400 to 500 dollars usd i'm not gonna say the japanese yen because it will confuse so many people so the standard is us dollars so roughly 400 to 500 dollars you could probably grab one somewhere on ebay or some kind of craigslist or some kind of third party uh free market and in most cases the mamiya 645 comes with a dedicated 80 mil f2.8 which is equivalent to a 50 mil lens on a 35 mil format i'm getting confused right now so that's basically a standard combination available and like i said there is a super variant to the mamiya which a famous photographer this guy right here shot i think shot with it once and the only difference between that camera and the 1000S is probably the interchangeable backs, which depending on how you shoot, you can basically swap one back for color negative and swap one for monochrome if you want. And it's similar to like a Hasselblad system where you can basically change the backs and dark slides and stuff like that. I also forgot to mention that the Mamiya 645 Super is more of a plasticky build, similar to the Mamiya 7, while the 1000S is more like a rugged camera using like dedicated like alloy, like magne I think magnesium alloy or some kind of steel type of like metal. So it's like built pretty well from my perspective. So an alternative to the Mamiya 645, there is obviously not to mention the Pentax 645, which is a rival to this camera. I personally never used the 645 from Pentax, but from what I researched, the 645 comes in like three varieties. The original, which is similar to, I guess, the 1000S series, which is fully manual camera while the 645N which came out later has some kind of autofocus and 
redesigned lens, so you can basically, it's sort of like an automatic camera. And there's a 645N2 version 2, which I think they added a mirror lockup function. So depending on your needs, you can basically search up which camera you need for your like shooting style. Those are the two mainstream cameras that were widely available to the public and probably on eBay. You can find them in a lot of like cases and at a bargain price of roughly 400 to 500 or maybe $600 depending on the condition. And that's basically it. <laughs> but I don't want to end the video right now because there are still more options available. And one of the unique, and this is going to be more of the, of the e unique like 645 variants camera that are available but more expensive and one that has to be mentioned is the Fuji GA 645i which is a unique name but it is a 645 camera but what makes this camera unique compared to the Mamiya and the Pentax is it's a rangefinder type and on top of that it's basically it has a, some kind of autofocus mechanism already integrated into the body and if I'm right this GA 645 is similar to the camera that I use the GW690 which has a fixed lens so you're basically stuck with one focal length i think you can't change the lens on the ga 645i and this is like a really interesting camera because it is expensive it is getting expensive it's roughly one thousand dollars us dollars usd it might go even higher in the next like year to come but what's interesting about this camera in particular what well, it was actually a camera fa famous for being used by a famous creative director of Oh, what's his name? <laughs> his name is Carl Lagerfield, the guy who sort of like fixed Chanel from the brink of death. And there's a lot of photos on Google if you search it up, but he really lo loved using this camera and until he, you know, passed out, unfortunately. And what's interesting about the camera that he used is after he used the GA645i, he was being spotted using a Hasselblad 6D 50C digital. And I thought to myself, what? So my battery just died on my camera. <laughs> so the 645 from the Fuji, I forgot to mention that there, I never used it, so I can't say much about it, but a lot of people complain or have complaints about the autofocus issues. I never experienced it, I never shot with it, so I can't say much, but there is, because it's in a really old, not a really old camera, but it is a sort of like an old camera, like the autofocus, I mean, if you have like really high expectation, you might like miss a shot or so. And in my case, I don't like these types of like automatic cameras. I like fully manual like functions, like you literally, literally use your hand to manually focus your subject. And I don't want to rely on some kind of mechanical like camera to do it for me, like something that to tell me the exposures and stuff like that. I would like to have fully 100% control on what I'm shooting. So that's why I like to use like a manual camera like the Mamiya and the GW690, but people have preferences. And I guess a GA645 is more like a street type of camera where if you're like constantly want to shoot, I mean, it, the camera does it for you, like one to the next exposure and autofocus is sort of like maybe like a couple of seconds or so and you can nail that shot if you to your needs so that's like one of the cameras that that i forgot to like mention so it's sort of like explicit slash almost extinct camera that's like super hard to find is definitely the the Contax 645AF. And this is sort of like a really modern camera that popped out around 1990, the end of 1990s actually. And they actually continue to like, sort of like service it and sell almost to the 2000s, early 2000s if I'm right. And it's like a really expensive camera. And if you can find one, it's like similarly priced to Mamiya 7, maybe over $2,000 with the camera body lens and the back which is also interchangeable, similar to the Mamiya Super and also the Pentax 645N and stuff like that. And, be, and the AF stands for autofocus. And like a modern version, it has autofocus capabilities, TTL if you're into flash. And it kind of like, and the company like disappeared like poof after 2000, year 2000. And what's interesting, a little bit of a historical background is that 
uh, Contax was being owned by a company called Kyocera. And Kyocera, it's interesting because when you look at these companies like Konica Minota, and if you compare what they did during the camera eras and what they're doing right now, Kyocera, which owned Contax, nowadays make kitchen utensils. And I'm going off topic, but they specialize in cer creating like ceramics, like material used for like knives and stuff like that and it's like kind of interesting to look into these like companies what they're doing right now but yeah i went off topic but that's unrelated to cameras and film cameras unfortunately but maybe it's connected somehow and yeah if you're lucky you can probably still find a contact 645 if you're like a commercial photographer back in the days maybe you might have owned one so it was probably one of the best like cameras available for the 645 like formats and yeah and they kind of destroy the market because they use it's like the best combination of contacts cameras and they use Carl Zeiss the best like German made it lenses and their system just works flawlessly and epic and along with that their shutter speeds go up to one four thousandth of a second which kind of tears this out of the water so there's like a lot of great things that going on with this camera but unfortunately there's not many copies available and I never shot with them but hopefully if I can have that opportunity it would be nice to like shoot with one sometime in the future so yeah and there's also another unique camera from a different company called Bronica and that is the Bronica ETR series this is a for the 645 actually uh, Bronica is an interesting company because they tried to like release the ETR series. It was a completely new like system and they actually called up Nikon and said, Hey, we would like to like make uh, this new brand new series of e Bronica ETR shiny camera system. And they asked Nikon politely, can you like give us your optics to use on our camera system? And Nikon said, no, sorry, we're like too busy with 35 mil or like, like busy with making our own 35 mil SLR system and they were really doing that and they weren't interested in medium format at all and you guys know as of today 2021 Nikon kind of dissed medium format format and they just continued to make full frame from the film era to now and it kind of like shows like how the companies have like a specific concept and they like to stick into it well the Bronica I guess they were like pissed really really they were like really pissed actually and they said okay well, we're gonna make our own optics and they ended up making their own Bronica lens Zenzanon like type of lenses to fit for their 645 system and it was uh, interesting it would be a, it would be interesting if they made a drama out of it so so yeah they basically made the whole system along with the lens lineup and there's a lot of like variants of the ETR system. And I have to mention that the first generation of the Bronica ETR was the ETRC series, which went against head to head with the Mamiya 645 1000 series. It's like similar, like what I call specs. You can't remove the back and it's like all integrated into one package and and they made like several like revisions to this ETR system. After the ETR C, C, they made a camera called the ETR S series, which went head to head with the Mamiya 645 Super, if I'm right, which had removable backs and interchangeable viewfinders. And I forgot to mention that the ETR C, C if I'm right, does not have interchangeable like called viewfinder so they made a couple of revisions along the way they tried to like make it more useful for the consumers and the professionals alike and in the end they released the etr si which was built for night photography and probably studio setups because they added a mirror lockup function with ttl functionalities so yeah that was the history of bronica <laughs> uh yeah so last not but least, there's a variant, not a variant, but more like a different sort of like camera that they also released, which is called the RF645. This is a minor camera that not many people talk about, 
because due to the fact that I guess they were trying to like nail down Mamiya and at the same time they wanted to nail down the Rangefinder series by releasing the RF series but I guess this was a short-lived product which only lasted like five years or so and an RF645 is a 645 format camera but it was a rangefinder I think it's the only camera that is a rangefinder in the 645 format if I'm if I'm right, there might be some kind of camera out there, but I mean, if you're lucky, you can find this RF overpriced RF six or five for more than two thousand five hundred dollars, which is, I guess, the half the price of Mamiya Seven. But if you're lucky, you might be able to snag one. So yeah. So that's basically the sort of like the available options for the six four five formats. Hopefully. I helped a lot of people look who are like looking for a 6 or 5 format cameras and hopefully I gave some knowledge to you guys. And at the same time, there might be some like cameras that I have like missed, especially like 6 or 5. I if if there's like a camera body that's basically has interchangeable backs, there is that possibility of sticking a 6 or 5 format back onto that specific camera for instance the Hasselblad system although it shoots with a 6x6 back I remember Sir Grainy Days shooting with a 6x5 back so there's that sort of like possibility and flexibility going on that if there is that 6x5 back you might be able to like use it on a different system such as the Hasselblad and I think Zenza Bronica's S2 series if I'm right which shoots which which went against the Hasselblad six by six might have that up like flexibility of shooting with a six four five like back, but I can't say much. I need to do more research on that topic. So yeah, hopefully you enjoy this video of me just talking about six four five format. I might make a video something similar to this depending on the feedback of my like subscribers if they're interested in. Maybe my next video will be talking a little bit about the 6x6 and the 6x7 combined. 6x6, there's not many cameras, so mix and match 6x6, 6x7, and make another video on 35mm film cameras, which there are abundance. <laughs> there might be some kind of demand for those types of videos. I'm like kind of curious if you guys are like interested in watching those types of videos. So yeah, hope you hope you guys like enjoy this video. And yeah. If you have any questions or any comments or any kind of like uh, oh you forgot this type of camera I'm happy to see those like other types of cameras that are available as of 2021 so yeah basically that's the my list of the available options for the 645 system so hope you guys enjoyed this video we will see you next time peace